Welcome along guys, while you join me at this early morning, <laughs> it's about quarter past six, it's early, <laughs> I'm not normally still in bed at this time, but the reason I'm up is I'm taking the new S1000XR on a bit of a jaunt, I'm heading up to Suffolk, I've got to go to Suffolk, so I thought, let's take something Tory, let's take something sporty, yet Tory, and we've come up with the new XR, now this is a bike I've I've used the old bike, used it, oh, that sounds a bit wrong, doesn't it? I've ridden the old bike, I've rode it down to the 2K in France when I was doing a little bit of work with performance bikes back in the day before they merged with the other magazine. Anyway, complicated. But I've ridden it a couple of years ago. This is the new version, all new for 2020. Well, apart from the mirrors and the little jog wheel, the whole bike has been revised, every last bit of it. So we're going to take this up to Suffolk, because I've got to go there anyway, which is about 180 miles away for me, but 180 mile trip up there, 180 miles back. So we're going to be doing nearly 400 miles on this bike today. What I've also done is I'm going on the twisty routes. I'm not just sitting on the motorways. I've used the Cali Moto to get me on the twisties to really see what this bike is all about, because at the end of the day, this is a sports tourer with the emphasis on the sports. So it sounds just my cup of tea. So what shall we say? I don't know why I keep looking at my wrist, it's a hair past the pimple, but shall we say I'll see you back here in 20 seconds after the intro? See you in a minute. So this bike is fully loaded in normal BMW press fleet fashion. This bike's got everything on it. So this has got the auxiliary lights on it. This has got the SOS button. It's got everything bar the luggage, which I really would have quite liked. But uh, there's another vlogger who's got one of these at the moment and they gave him the wrong bike. They gave him the bike with the luggage, which I should have had. <laughs> didn't they TMF so I've got my Krieger kit on this instead to get me up to Suffolk get my bits and bobs in all my camera gear it's mainly full of my lunch right anyway enough dilly dallying let's step aboard so the S1000 XR this is a bike I have ridden before I've taken this to France as I mentioned before that was I think about three years ago I really enjoyed the bike you know, it wasn't perfect, it was aggressive, it was fast, it wheelied, you know, it was a lunatic on stilts, basically. So the S1000 double R, but on stilts, think of it as that, you know, this, this bike has no pretenses about going off-road. It has a 17-inch front wheel, cast wheels, you know, there's none of this 21-inch, it is definitely very much a road bike. You know, it doesn't even have an it doesn't even have an off-road mode on the dashboard. So, don't think you can be nipping. This isn't really an adventure bike. This isn't an adventure bike. This is more equivalent to the Super Duke GT. You know, it's a GT Tourer basically for those people who want to go fast but don't want to do it on a sports bike. So this bike is all new for 2020. It's got the new engine, the new double R. S1000 engine slightly tuned differently you know, it doesn't have quite the same top end they've tried to make it more torquey but one thing it is missing is the shift cam there's no shift cam in this bike which is a little bit odd the screen's adjustable one hand by the way which is a little bit strange why they didn't put the shift cam in it if you ask BMW they'll tell you because it didn't need it <laughs> because you know it's, it's more about the torque it's less about being high revving okay we'll take that BMW as well as having the new engine missing the shift cam they've also shaved 10 kilos off the overall weight of this bike there's the engine is like one and a half kilos lighter the swinging arm is one and a half kilos lighter the electronic suspension is also lighter adding up to a 10 kilo weight saving so all in fully fueled depending on which model you've got and what extras you've got on the bike of course it weighs about 225 kilos for a little bit of twistiness I've got this set in dynamic throttle response dynamic suspension 
because electronic suspension now comes standard across both of these versions of the bike they all come with the lecky suspenders which for this type of bike i think is perfect because you can bang it in the road mode when you want to tour when you want to just munch miles come to a sporty section and you put it in a dynamic and you get all of that more sporty setup so that's a fantastic little uh, little thing for this type of bike <laughs> and it is a lot of fun through the twisty stuff i think that is where this this is this bike really shines in the twisties uh, we're tucking here tucking here whoa hey a little bit of front wheel action there that's what you want to see on this sort of bike isn't it a bit of fun you, you want this is this bike is an exciting touring bike and you want a little bit of action like that sound rather tasty I have to say the induction roar is beautiful I think this bike is 165 brake horsepower which is the same more or less as before but now it's Euro 5 so you know they've got the same power with all of the restrictions which the Euro 5 gubbins brings so if you're interested in this bike you've probably watched a few other reviews on this and one thing people tend to pick up on then it's very obvious you know if you've ridden the old bike it's very much different from the old bike is the actual ergos the actual god it's so bright i can't see is the actual seating position this is very much a bike you're sat in and not on the seat is completely sculpted out so you've got like a sculpted out seat so you can't move around on this bike and this one this is one thing i'm a little bit worried about with the sort of distance i'm going to be doing today is what is that seat going to be like on a huge trip, a huge journey? Right, I'll switch it back on in a minute. Let me cover a few more miles, or this is going to be one hell of a long video. <laughs> See you in a minute. Hi, can I help? Hey, yeah, uh, could I have a sausage and egg McMuffin meal, please, with orange juice? Uh, yeah, and a banana. Mm, that'll do, lovely. Oh yeah, sorry, just to uh, get my cup holder ready. Thank you very much. Uh, almost. Thanks very much. And you. Uh, um, uh, um, uh. Let's try not to lose our breakfast. Oh God. <laughs> what a way to start the day. Slow it down, Chopsy. Come on now. Don't be acting like a hooligan. High speed corners. The bars are so wide. The leverage you can put through them is fantastic. The bike feels super nimble. Now I've actually been out and followed Greg, who's now got an 890R through the twisties. And that though the 890R is an incredible bike through the twisties. I actually managed to stay with him, more or less, on this, which is a real testament to just how flickable, how fast this is through the twisty sections. It changes direction very, very fast. I think that's partly due to how wide the bars are and how much leverage you can put in. So it's really good in the twisties with a suspension in the sporty setting, you get a bit of feedback from the road but that would be one of my only criticisms of the handling even in the sport setting you're just missing a little bit of the the texture and the feel back from the tarmac with the power delivery i do find it a little bit flat 
at the bottom. I think that is really just a, a straight four thing though. Very often straight fours can be a little bit flat and then scream at the top. So it is a little bit flat. When you open the throttle, you know, it feels like this. It's a little bit hesitant. But I am, I'm a V-twin man. You know, I'm, I'm not a massive straight four engine fan, as anyone who watches the channel will know. But it is, it's got a, they've retuned it nicely. It's got a reasonable amount of bottom end, but it's not overly, you know, it could do with some more. Straight fours could always do with a little bit more initial pickup. It's now 7.53. I've been going for longer than I thought, actually. I've got about an hour and a half. Have I caught past? Yeah, about an hour and a half. Incredible. And I've gone more or less nowhere. One thing I've found very nice so far is the electronic suspension. Being able... It's, there's, a, there's a dramatic difference between dynamic and road. There, there's a massive difference. In a dynamic mode, yeah, it's sporty. Perhaps not as sharp as I'd really like. But when you do go into road, it just smooths everything out and it really softens up the suspension. Sometimes this electronic suspension, you're like, I think I can tell the difference, but there's a very, very obvious difference when you go into between road and dynamic which is brilliant it really is lovely if the you know if you just want to sit on the motorway if the roads are getting a bit too harsh a bit too bumpy bang it into road mode it is a beautiful and that's what i've got it in at the moment so what's going to happen now i'm going to end up hitting the motorway in a minute i'm going to end up on the m25 around dartford tunnel and then what i'll do once i get north of the m25 i'll switch back to calimoto and we'll go a nice back twisty way all up through Norfolk, all the way to Bury St Edmunds is where we're actually going. Cruise control. Cruise control's nice, works very well. Just setting it at 80. At 80, you can feel a little bit of the little bit of a buzz. I think the the answer is you shouldn't be holding on too tight. If you're holding on too tight, those vibes are going to get to you. But if you're just lightly caressing the bars as you should be then it, it, it's fine and i'm not even in top gear there we go it's even better now i'll switch you back on in a minute because i'm sure you don't want to see boring motorways speak to you soon My ass is fine so far, thanks for asking. But it's always better to take some preventative measures. And the reason I like these tall, I would say adventure bikes, I don't really class it as an adventure bike because it can't go off road, but you've still got that lovely seating position where you can just stand up when you have had enough. Just to give, well, not even had enough, but just to give your bottom a bit of a rest. Stand up and enjoy the view. Dartford Tunnel. Time to come off the awful M25 soon. But I mean, it's quarter to nine. I've nearly been, I've been on this bike two and a half hours and I really am as fresh as a daisy still. This seating position, I was a little bit concerned that it, it might be uncomfortable, but so far, I'm still in complete comfort. So that's a good sign. Let's hope that continues. Oh, <laughs> just coming off the motorway. It is now half past nine. I've been sat on the M11 and then I've come off onto that one, <laughs> whatever it was. Stop here a minute. I'll just program the, uh, the Kalimoto now and take five minutes because <laughs> I'm feeling it a bit after being sat on the motorway for a couple of hours. Oh, quick stretch. Oh. Well, that's 
three and a quarter hours on the bike. Yeah, we did stop for a quick Mackey's. I'm actually finding that seat really comfortable. My ass is fine. You are locked in a little bit, like I say, because it's so carved, carved in here. But you've got the option to stand up as well, which I think really helps. But right, let's get on some twisties, because all we've done really is sit on the chuffing motorway. Ah, a little break. Quick uh, Jimmy Riddle. <laughs> Camera's on. Let's hit some twisties. So I've had her in, uh, had the dampening in road mode, been nice and soft on the motorway. Let's put her in dynamic now because we've got some twisties coming up. So how many miles? We've done 157 miles. Let's just have a look how many we've got left in the tank. I reckon somewhere scrolling through the options. Tire pressures, what, 50 miles it reckons. That's not bad, is it? 50 miles left in the tank. And we've done that, so it's 200 miles right. I've going to have done, if that 50 miles is correct, I'm going to have done 200 miles on 20 litres. So, so far I've been, uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed this little trip. I can't believe I've done, you know, three and a half hours on this bike and I'm really am um, fresh. It's got the white creature comforts, the cruise control, the heated grips, which are all standard, I think, on this model. The heated grips could be extra, but uh, it could be standard, I don't know. I've got no idea. You'll have to look into that. So there's no doubt about it, this bike is a sports tourer. So how does it handle when you're really putting it through its paces? How sporty is it? Well, I think it is a little bit flattened off, maybe, from the old version. I think it could be a little bit softer, perhaps a little bit easier to live with. So I'm trying to find this out there as well. But it's still very much got what it takes. It's still very much... You can tell it's what, what its DNA is all about. It's very much a sports bike with comfortable suspension, a sports bike with comfortable ergos, wide bars, a nice upright position. It's not an adventure bike, I wouldn't say, because it's got no off-road capabilities. It's, it's, it's a GT bike, really. A sports tourer, it's about covering distance very quickly, very easily, but when you want to get sporty you've got the option and I think the electronic suspension I can see why they've made it standard across the range because it this sort of bike really needs those sort of uh, that, that those two options a, a nice comfortable road mode and then a way to easily flick of a switch make it sporty if I was looking to buy one of these sorts of bikes which you know I could be you know if you need to cover miles and this is the sort of bike I'd have. So there she is, guys. Ignore the slight wind noise. Basically, yeah, I'm home now. <laughs> I'm about 10 minutes from my house. I've spent all day on this bike. It is about six o'clock, quarter past six. So I set off at 5.30 this morning. Sorry, quarter past six this morning. And I'm back home by about half past six. So 12 hours of riding all day, basically. Not all this. I did get off and spend three hours on a Brutale, but we're not talking about a Brutale. We are talking about the lovely little XR. So new for this year is the style. Well, new, everything's new, really. The styling is much improved over the old bike. I really like the, the, the DRLs, the whole styling of the front headlights. It looks much, much meaner than the old bike. But look how much it leans over on the side stand. It looks almost like a scary angle, isn't it? I don't know if that's to make it easier to get on, but it really leans over on the side stand. Useful things, it's now got a little cubby hole. Keep your glasses, keep your earplugs. That's really handy. This is the seat. And you can see how carved out it is. As I said, I, I had reservations about how comfortable this would be before I set off, but I have literally spent 
seven hours, seven hours sat in that seat today. And my ass is starting to feel it a little bit now, but that is amazing. I think because it is curved to your sort of ass shape, it seems that you've got more of your weight, more of your ass touching the seat, hence you're spreading less weight over a larger area or the same amount of weight over a larger area. And that seems to work. I was a bit worried that that seat, because it seems quite thin, I was a bit worried that it may not be comfortable and I was even considering getting some sort of seat to put on top of it, you know, like an air seat, but that has been so comfortable. I think it's actually been one of the most comfortable bikes I've ever ridden. Another little design feature of this bike, it's like the double R. The tail lights are also the brake lights integrated. So if I put the hazards on, you can see what I mean. You've got the, the lights and the indicators and the brake lights all within those, within those lights themselves. Very neat. Oh, LCR stickers. They're available at my website, by the way. Link in the description. <laughs> but some of it, you know, the plastics move around a little bit. As, you know, should that do that? Should that move like that? Should that be more solid? I don't know. I mean, the quality of it is good, but in some things like that, you think, well, maybe, maybe that should be more secure than that. Electronic suspension is Marzocchi. Also the BMW branded calipers like on the double R. The brakes are fantastic on this. Don't let that put you off. The brakes feel as nice as a Brembo system. I think they feel better than the old Brembos used to have on the on the last generation bike. They're really the feel and the power from the brakes is excellent. It's keyless, so you've got the start stop button there. Wakes up the dashboard. As I've said, you know, these BMW BMW dashes are very very nice i really like the sports layout which is that one which gives you the big rev counter the lean angles brake pressures it's a very clear very really nice display trip number i've done 359 miles today on this bike 359 miles it will do it, it will do 200 miles on a tank i've had 200 miles out of it at a tank today and that's been doing like 45 miles per gallon and that's been sitting really at 85 on the motorway sometimes up to 90. another another great thing about this which i think is better than like the gt is all the screenage you've got it gives an amazing amount of wind protection with this little bit on top my little aftermarket screen that even with a peaked helmet six foot two i'm sat in complete calm behind that it's been quite a warm day today and it's actually been I've actually been getting a bit too hot because you're not getting much airflow. There's that much wind protection. It is. Uh, it makes just sitting on the motorway an absolute breeze on this. And with the suspension, you can go through the different modes. It is. It is a touring weapon. Well, there we go, guys. That's it. I'm going home now for a hot bath, a soak, and then put my feet up in front of the telly. <laughs> bit of dinner. I've. I've really enjoyed myself on this bike today. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me on this trip. When I borrowed this, I wanted to make sure I did a decent trip on it. There's no point testing this sort of bike just on a, you know, a quick hour out around the back roads. You have to really spend some time in that saddle. And I can tell you, it's a beautiful bike to do any sort of distance on. Thanks so much for watching. There goes the car. Appreciate your viewing as always. If you could leave a like, below if you're not subscribed click the subscribe click the subscribe button even tick that bell and then you'll be notified of any other videos i upload that's if i do any more i probably will <laughs> thanks for watching guys i will see you later ride safe take care and i'll see you later this is power level one which is full power <laughs> Done here. <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to me.